I'm Kevin Harnett along with Tim Laird. And Kevin, it's time to get cooking on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. This time, it's something special. A frontier night. We're going out to dinner with a tribute to the days of Daniel Boone with food from the frontier at one of Kentucky's amazing state resort parks. Very good, five stars. I'm just trying new things that I've never had before. From rabbit and dumpling stew. That stuff is good. To roast bison carved to order. I can't wait to try some. <laughs> yeah, man. Everything from catfish to cobbler and wild turkey casserole. All right now on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. Kevin Harnett, glad to be with you again, revealing more secrets of bluegrass chefs. This time, we're at Lake Cumberland State Resort Park, where it's frontier night. We're doing a lot of wild game. Chef Steven Stewart is in charge of all the food for the occasion, and he has a very ambitious menu. From the water, we're doing a crawfish etouffee. Uh, alongside that, we'll have fried alligator. Love gator tail catfish and frog legs. I like the catfish myself. I love catfish. And with hush puppies as well, uh, for all the people that love love the southern kind of cuisine. The catfish and the hush puppies are great. We're doing duck fat whipped potatoes, as well as duck confit with roasted garlic and Brussels sprouts to go with that. I love the duck. The duck was really good. We have Maryland blue crab mac and cheese. We, have, we, uh, we made a cheese sauce in house. Uh, we, we, it's all a lump, lump crab meat and it's gonna be a very hearty, you know, crab-filled mac and cheese. It definitely ain't, ain't, ain't cutting anybody short on crab. We're gonna top that with shredded cheese, roast it off in the oven so it has a nice crust layer, but it's gonna be absolutely delicious. The crab mac and cheese. It's been my favorite so far. On a scale of one to 10, I would say it's a 10. It's good. We're also uh, doing a southern style green bean with candied bacon. A lot of times when you add bacon to green beans, it sogs out and gets real soggy. This will actually retain, retain that, that crispiness. But we're doing garlic butter biscuits with fresh baked yeast rolls we're making in house. Uh, we're also doing a wild blackberry cobbler, a bourbon and honey bread pudding, and a scratch cake with caramel icing. So everybody will definitely leave full. And most of the parks will offer this at some point, so definitely contact your local parks um, to, to get, get the game plan. We're getting more than the game plan tonight. We're also getting the secrets to how all the food is made, starting with the soup of the day. For our soup du jour for tonight is going to be a uh, rabbit and dumpling. It's, it's utilizing some wild game, some of that prairie you know, style animal. Uh, it, it's something that a lot of people don't really partake in nowadays, but back in the frontier days, the rabbit was utilized a lot. People compare it to chicken. So here, we just pulled out our rabbit. It's been braising for roughly four hours. We braised it down with some rosemary and some thyme, let it slow cook. Uh, we utilized all the parts. We left the bones in. Obviously, we took them out for the actual soup itself, but I wanted some of that flavor. So essentially, all I did was add water. And that, that liquid is actually going right back into the rabbit and dumplings as a soup. If, we, if done properly, fall off the bone. Yes, that's going to be amazing. They're extremely tender, so they're going to essentially fall apart. And the bones are literally that easy to remove. We will get all that rabbit meat deboned. And just to make sure we don't get any bones, we will strain this. Oh, it smells so delicious. I added the drippings from the pan already. So this is our dumpling stock. Personally, I like to use biscuit dough. Uh, a lot of people make their own dumplings at home. So we make a biscuit dough here. I think overall it just makes, it makes a better quality product uh, to use biscuit dough instead of using, you know, bread dough. They'll sink, they'll float to the top. And once they sink again, that's when you know they are ready to go. Oh yeah, we're almost there. They should fall here in just a moment and we will be ready to pull and drop some more. Yeah, I actually enjoyed it. I was a little nervous about it. It's really good. It's good. The Frontier Night food includes a lot from the land, but also from the water, including 
crawfish et fait. We're gonna put our own little spin on it, but it's still a fairly traditional recipe. So I start with a roux. It is the beginnings of the roux. Essentially, it's just butter and flour. You, you add it to a lot of soups, stocks, just as a thickening agent. The key to it is slowly adding the flour, allowing it to kind of mix in with that butter and cook down. You definitely want a nice little boil, probably medium, medium to high heat, allowing that flour to cook. We're gonna slowly add in our stock here. It's actually the stock from uh, boiling down the crawfish. And so no worries, that roux will take just a little bit to thicken back up since we just cooled it off with that stock, but it will thicken. I'm adding the Trinity in the, to so, start sauteing down. Onions, bell peppers. Get those sweating a little bit, get them starting to cook. Adding the celery here, it's a staple. Down in Louisiana, gotta have Trinity. I'm just seasoning it up a little bit. I like to season it every step, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and season the stock as well, but I added salt, pepper, garlic. I'm gonna go ahead and add uh, some other spices to our stock, our, our base here. So I'm gonna do the same thing, salt and pepper. We're gonna add a little cayenne for kick, a little chili powder, some fresh minced garlic, some parsley flakes, and some thyme. I'm gonna actually go ahead and add our tomatoes. This adds a real nice acidity to it. It also helps kind of change and darken that color up a little bit. Starting to get a little tender here. We're gonna go ahead and add a little bit to our stock. And we are gonna let that simmer for around 10 or 15 more minutes and let it thicken. But this will be a beautiful sauce to add our crawfish to. Now that this sauce is starting to thicken a little bit, we'll go ahead and add our crawfish. We boiled it in shell. Uh, we added our own little Cajun liquid, our boiling liquid to it. Old Bay, uh, Cajun blackened seasoning, salt, pepper, fresh garlic. We let that boil for roughly 10 minutes and we cut the heat and let it soak for another 15. And then we let them cool, we peeled them up. So we'll be making this multiple times throughout the evening. Keep it as fresh and it, it, as good quality as possible. It, it's well worth it. The labor is nothing compared to the gratification of the people that are coming out and enjoying this. We got rice pilaf, essentially long grain rice with orzo pasta. We got our crawfish etouffee. It's ready to go. Man, does that look good. And we're just getting started on this special Frontier Night edition of Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. Coming up, roast bison and duck fat whipped potatoes. And later, you don't want to miss this wild blackberry dessert. If you're not here, you're missing out. <laughs> Hike, bike, boat, golf, and relax. Make the most of your vacation at Kentucky's 45 state parks. Plan your trip at www.parks.ky.gov. I'm Tim Laird with more Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. We're back at Lake Cumberland State Resort Park on our special Frontier Night Edition. We're doing a lot of wild game. The menu is full of frontier favorites from both the land and the water. We've had rabbit and dumpling soup, crawfish etouffee, and now a centerpiece of the meal, the roast bison that will be hand carved in the dining room. It's a very lean meat, so it's a much healthier option for people over over beef, um, but it still it still provides a, an enormous amount of vitamins and minerals that you can partake, you know, you you can take from that game, um, and it, it's it's just a good overall solution if somebody's wanting to eat a little bit healthier. This is a bison shoulder. It's on the outside of the shoulder of the animal closest to the fur. Uh, it's really, it's a really awesome cut of meat when you slow cook it. And we're going to douse it down with a little bit of olive oil and coat that down. So it'll allow the seasonings and, and some of the fresh herbs that we're going to add to this stick. I'm going to do some salt. I want to keep it fairly simple. 
because I want the meat to essentially speak for itself because a lot of people don't always have the opportunity to eat bison. And it has an amazing flavor, very similar to beef, but a lot leaner and healthier for you. We've got some fresh garlic here. So we are gonna make some scores into this and add our fresh herbs. And so we're gonna add whole sprigs of rosemary. And I want some of the some of the rosemary to be exposed to the oven. That'll allow the tips to burn a little bit and, and allow that to smoke. And it will kind of add a little bit of a smokiness flavor to the meat. We're gonna add some thyme. And she is ready for the oven. We're gonna cook this at about 225 for around five and a half to six hours in that range. We'll, we'll keep a close eye on it to make sure the internal tip's not getting too hot. Bison's very good, very good. Tasty. Good. I was gonna say, I ain't got much left. It's all pretty good. So, I mean, if you're not here, you're missing out. <laughs> if you've never had roast bison, you've got to give it a try. And the same can be said for this Chef Stevens roasted Brussels sprouts and duck confit. I love the duck. The duck was really good. The confit means to preserve, and back in those days, that was kind of what they had to do to, to preserve their food. And it's not confit is not traditionally frontier, but it has the same kind of concepts to, to try to preserve their meat for as long as possible in a cool, dry place. It is a French method, but the, but the, but the basis of it is to essentially preserve the meat. So we, what we do is we take the duck legs and we cook them down in the basically oil or fat. And essentially, when that cools, that fat recongeals to, to the leg, which reduces the oxygen content that's actually touching that meat, which reduces spoilage. And it turns out, a byproduct of that duck confit is the secret ingredient in the chef's whipped potatoes. It is a phenomenal secret ingredient. We're doing duck fat whipped potatoes. That's what they did back in those days. They, they would utilize every part of the animal if, it, if possible, whether it be the bones, whether it be the fur, whether it be the feathers. So I, I'm trying to utilize every part of the animal. So when the fat, when we, that duck fat that we, when we braised down, we skimmed it off, and we're gonna add that to our potatoes. It, duck fat is a phenomenal flavor. If you haven't had it, definitely try it out. But if y'all are partaking it at the Frontier Night, it definitely, definitely a must have. A must have indeed. And so is this, wild berry cobbler. We'll get the secrets to that later on. And up next, wild turkey, the kind you eat. It was a very easy recipe to prepare and um, everybody seemed to enjoy it. It was great. Hike, bike, boat, golf, and relax. Make the most of your vacation at Kentucky's 45 state parks. Plan your trip at www.parks.ky.gov. I'm Kevin Harnett, back with you on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. And this time, it's a special wild game edition of the show. We've been enjoying Frontier Night at Lake Cumberland State Resort Park with everything from roast bison to crawfish et de fait. And now, we're taking a side trip with Kentucky's Fish and Wildlife Department for some wild turkey. I'm Becky Bloomfield. I work for the Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife Resources as the Field to Fork Coordinator. The Field to Fork program is a start to finish, learn how to hunt program, how to um, process the game, how to prepare the meat correctly, how to store it correctly, and how to make it taste really good. But we found a lot of people who were coming and saying, I have this free meat, right? And I'm not having to go to the grocery store and buy it. I harvest it myself or a neighbor harvests it and gives it to me, whatever it is. I mean, I just don't know how to prepare it. And so the Extension worked with Department of Fish and Wildlife to come up with Cook Wild to Kentucky. We currently have 34 recipes. It's focused on truly using that wild game meat. This breastbone, it does run straight down and then it tees off on both sides. Wild game does taste differently than store-bought meat. That's heavy. That's a really good piece of meat off of that bird. We hear a lot about wild game, you know, it's tougher and it's, uh, you have that gamey taste sometimes. Um, so some different things that you can do to help tenderize the meat is a marinade. Some sort of marinade is always going to help break down um, some of that tender, some of that toughness. Um, you can actually even pound the meat. That serves two purposes. It breaks up that connective tissue, which makes meat tougher. 
um, and also it makes it a more even meat thickness and so then it cooks more evenly and anytime you can add um, something acidic that's going to help break down that toughness as well um, and so you see a lot of turkey recipes that have grapefruit or oranges or apples and that's the purpose of that we use lemon juice we also see a lot of people who brine their meat um, so just a salt water solution it doesn't have to be high in salt um, let it sit eight hours overnight something like that and that will help tenderize um, that meat as well and, and remove some of that gamey um, flavoring. We have three different recipes in the Cook Wild program that focus on turkey specifically. Tonight we made wild turkey and broccoli casserole and hot turkey salad. I had the broccoli, turkey, broccoli casserole and hot chicken salad and they were both excellent. They were good, absolutely. You initially prepare the meat the same way and then you can make the two different recipes from that one way that you made the meat and you prepare it in a roasting dish in the oven, just garlic powder and pepper um, on it to start. You put it in the roasting pan for um, about an hour, a little over an hour. For one of the recipes, we cubed it, and for one, we shredded it. I think it was about four cups of cubed turkey meat. Um, and then you just steam frozen broccoli. You layer a, a nine by 13 dish with the turkey meat and then with the broccoli. And then you make a topping um, with cream of chicken soup mayonnaise, um, lemon juice, and curry powder. And then so we mix those up and pour those over top of the broccoli and turkey that was layered. And then you make a crust essentially with pan panko breadcrumbs, um, shredded cheddar cheese, and melted butter. And then that goes back into the oven um, for about 30 minutes just to kind of melt the cheese and bring it all together and warm it all up. It was a very easy recipe to prepare and um, everybody seemed to enjoy it. Really good, um, I like the henna curry. It was great. And then hot turkey salad, sort of a take on chicken salad, um, but it's a warm dish. This is where we shredded the turkey meat that we initially cooked. So it's got um, the same, the cream of chicken soup, the mayonnaise, chopped up celery, fresh mushrooms, and then again that cheddar cheese and so you just mix all of that together in a bowl and then same thing you stuck it back in the oven for 30 minutes at 350 degrees. Uh, it tasted very very flavorful. Didn't feel like I was eating wild game. Felt like I was eating uh, just a normal turkey dish from home so I, I really like that. So if you're interested in other Field to Fork programs check out our website at fw.ky.gov slash field to fork or you can visit planeatmove.com and you can um, search for recipes and there's an actual Cook Wild tab there that you can find all the Cook Wild Kentucky recipes. Up next, it's time for dessert with bourbon bread pudding and wild blackberry cobbler. The secrets to all of it when The Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs returns. Hike, bike, boat, golf, and relax. Make the most of your vacation at Kentucky's 45 state parks. Plan your trip at www.parks.ky.gov. Tim Laird here with you again on our special Frontier Night edition of Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. We're back at Lake Cumberland State Resort Park, and it's time for dessert. First up, Chef Stephen Stewart's bourbon bread pudding, served with the secrets to making it yourself at home. We started off with challah bread, which is a very sweet bread to begin with, and we, we cut it up and toasted it off. You can use other breads, white bread from home. If you got some day old bread or some stale bread that is just going out the door, why not reutilize it and, and make, a, make an awesome dish out of it. We're going to add milk, heavy cream, a little bit of egg, honey, brown sugar, some cinnamon. We got K Kentucky bourbon. That's going to be, that's, that's the secret ingredient in that bread pudding. You got to have it. The bourbon bread pudding is amazing, but save room for some of this too. We're doing a wild blackberry cobbler that we're, we're reducing down, cooking in house. We added sugar, a little bit of cornstarch to thicken it. Once it activates, it'll thicken to a really nice consistency. There's no liquid added to that whatsoever, no water. We're making our cobbler dough topping in house. This is gonna be our cobbler dough. It's equal parts self-rising flour, milk, and sugar. So very simple to do it at the house. So we're gonna add a little bit of our cobbler mixture here, our cobbler dough. We'll run them about 350 for roughly an hour and 15 minutes. Uncovered, yep. I want that dough to rise and I want it to, to kind of brown up a little bit. Good to go. Wow, 
What a way to finish off Frontier Night at Lake Cumberland State Resort Park. Keep an eye out for a chance to enjoy one yourself in person at a state park near you. I'm Kevin Harnett, and for Tim Laird, we'll see you next time on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs.